Hey guys, this is Kirob speaking. Today I'm going to show you the fourth tutorial mission of the upcoming demo release of Automation. Alright, so let's get started. The fourth tutorial mission is called Spinning Faster and it is about taking a very old engine and turning it into a modern sports car engine or modern in the case of it being 1995. Oh well, current year 2000. But the manufacturing year is 1995, as you can see. So, what do we have here? We ha really have an old engine. And it doesn't look very sporty at all, with its maximum power being <laughs> reached at, what is it, um, at 4700 RPM, and maximum torque at 3400 RPM. Looks pretty average to me. So, right, uh, let's check what we can change then. Um, as we can see here, the list of specifications has grown since the last tutorial mission. This one is much less one-dimensional than the last one, and the previous tutorial missions in general. Um, we do have a cost restraint right now. And, um, yes, we have to work around this somehow. So now we can't just choose all the best parts. But we want to build a sports car engine, so we should choose something else than cast con rods probably, which allow us a maximum RPM of very low, because we're going to go to 8000 RPM as a limit. So I would say as Conrods are the weakest spot in here in this list, um, here we are at average with the forged H-beam, I think we go to I-beam steel Conrods and we take a forged steel crank and we take um, forged pistons. That should be a well, a rather good compromise between cost and performance in this case. So let's check what we have on the second tab. <laughs> and I see, yeah, that's that's not very sport engine like. Um, two valve push rod engine. That's fun, right? So no, but we don't want to have those on a sports car engine in 1995. So um, let's try to go for a dual overhead cam and um, change from two valves to say four valves. Um, we see the man hours climbed drastically also but um, well, we have to invest somewhere, right? Then we are getting to compression and as this engine is working with a carburetor currently um, it needs to be set to lower compression setting but we will change the carburetor um, system to a modern fuel injection system so we can up compression a bit already and see where we, ga uh, where we go. Then we have cam the almighty cam profile again and as we remember from previous scenarios uh, where we want to have more power in the high RPM range we will have to change it to something around 60. So here I will just start out by going to 65 and see what happens. Oh yes, then we have both variable valve timing and variable valve lift as options. And sadly not the combination of those two, which will come in year 98. Oh, yes, 98, but we're in 95, so mm, sadly no go. Okay, so uh, I will take... Um, well, what should we take? makes stuff more expensive of course but we can check here okay if we take variable valve lift this would give us two different cam profiles one um, high cam profile and one low cam profile which is switched in between automatically this is very useful for making an engine more reliable so you don't have to drive around at race car setting in um, city traffic which saves you quite a bit of fuel I would say. Um, right, so um, we go for variable valve timing. Um, sadly, yeah, well, we're going to build a sports car so you don't want to be driving around the city uh, except your total show off, of course. So variable valve timing and cam profile 65, that should do. Let's take a look at the fuel system. Um, right, so we have no, no more carburetors for you you have eaten enough fuel already. Right.
great um, injection system and we don't want to take this super costly mechanical injection system if you have a nice and modern uh, multi-point fuel injection system. And let's see the difference in man hours. It's just two more man hours for the throttle per cylinder setup. So I wonder if we should take this one or the single one. Um, the thing is, the throttle per cylinder setup gives you a bit more power than the single um, throttle setup. So, ah, let's, let's just grab it. Yes, let's grab it. Okay, we do not have a intake limitation, so let's go for the performance intakes. Uh, and this looks much more sporty to me already. And we're not going to run uh, leaded fuel anymore in 1995, at least not um, as long as we are not in the Australian outback. Um, so we are going to use what kind of fuel? Regular unleaded. Ah, that's about the same run rating as before as well. Okay, then we have emissions as a limitation and... Um, right, so we want to be both efficient. So we up this one remember the bug of the slider. So efficiency is up here too. And a fuel mixture probably a bit lower. Let's let's just choose a medium setting. And the RPM limiter. Okay, what do we have here? We want to set it to 8000 RPM. Right, okay, I think we're done with this tab. Let's jump to exhaust. Okay, so um, you probably would like to have something a bit more sporty than that without sacrificing too much co in the cost department. So you, you're not going for this pretzel, but maybe for, because this is too many man hours, but maybe for long tubular headers that could work, or saving 0.7 man hours with t just tubular headers. Um, let's go for the long ones. Right, and um, we are going to produce something, well, if we do it really well, we should be producing something like 200 kilowatts, I would assume, a modern, rather big race car engine, right? So, um, let's see what we have. Uh, 430 kilowatts, no, that's a bit much. Um, we don't want to sacrifice low-end torque either, because this gives you... Oh, no, okay, we don't don't really need low end torque because we do not have a responsiveness rating. But well, eh, can't hurt, right? To have it right. Um, then, um, yes. Oh, yeah, we have a loudness requirement. So if you go up to your six inch pipe, um, you will make quite an impression uh, in the city driving around. Uh, but that might not be a positive one. Everyone will think you are a complete douchebag. So let's go for a reasonable setting. Um, Okay, high-end power should be not limited by exhaust size. It's 275 kilowatts can put be put through this baby. Okay, then, right, we have this emission requirement, so there is no way around um, using a freeway cat or a high-flow freeway cat. Um, catalytic converter, that is, of course. And let's see for the man hours okay that's quite a change uh, the high flow one is of course better for sports cars but um, well it is more costly so we'll see where we end up let's let's take the good one for for now first muffler no we don't need no first muffler or maybe we do yeah probably we actually do okay let's go for first muffler straight through and then we take a reverse flow muffler at the end and hope for the best. Right, okay, the engine is ready and set up for running, revving, and um, let's go. So let's see if it's knocking severely or something. Does it look like it? Looks good. Torque kicking in. Yay! Gold rank! First try. <laughs> okay. Um, that's pretty neat. Um, there are quite a few things to optimize. And you can see this in the torque curve especially. Um, 
this should be basically flat up here so that we do not have this slight um, crack in the power curve which just flattens out here that's that's not optimal um, also we still have a bit of headroom in the fuel octane setting and this could further reduce emissions as well if we up um, if we up the compression a bit and we could optimize loudness a bit by changing to a um, reverse flow first muffler as well um, then cost let's see we are at 1444 uh, and you can reduce this one drastically probably by just going for overall a bit cheaper options so there are many different options of how to build this engine to achieve a very high score so um, yeah I will leave that to you and um, I hope you enjoyed this video and see you tomorrow, I guess. So, have a good one. Bye.